if we look at the diagram here, we've taken the object from, say, the 12 o'clock position and moved it to the 9 o'clock position. So that would be a 90 degree change uh, measuring the displacement as an angle. Or we could say that it would be this portion of the circumference or circumference divided by 4. <clears throat> In this video, we're going to have a look at vertical circular motion. We're going to draw a free body diagram of an object moving in vertical circular motion. And we're going to summarize vertical circular motion in terms of Newton's second law. So let's look at an example of a roller coaster loop the loop. And uh, we're going to look at two positions. The rider at the bottom of the loop and the rider at the top of the loop. So your head goes backwards, like I showed you, and your body moves forward. So eventually, all your neck muscles have to act on your head to pull your head along with your body. The size of that force required to keep your head on your body is proportional to the acceleration. in that particle. But a compound is a combination of particles that are bound together with, uh, in a chemical manner. So they cannot easily be separated. Down. And the mass of the Earth is 5.98 times 10 to the 24th kilograms divided by 6.389 times 10 to the 6th meters. And don't forget to square that. Okay. Uh, just make a little note here. Look it up. Right there. So when you start, you want to make sure that with nothing on it, that the, the line here is on zero. Right? So this one, you can see, is not. It actually starts below zero. And you want to make sure that you can fix it. So to fix it, generally you just tighten or loosen this little screw here. As you tighten it, it should bring that up. And you want to make sure that that's zero. Pull on it a little bit and then you'll make sure it stops at zero. But let's say I want to drop it from 20 centimeter, 20 centimeters. You want to make sure you drop it vertically and it should land in the flower vertically. If it doesn't, just turn it a little bit. And you want to measure the, the amount of the egg that's sticking out. So you put down to the surface of the flower and you get your eye right down to that level and you can see it's like 4.3 centimeters. So. Looks like the string has no effect on the reading of the balance. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this 10 gram mass and suspend it in that fashion. And we see that the reading on the balance is 9.70. Now... Sometimes you must take a guess, but in this experiment, you can find out the average mass of a Hershey kiss by looking it up on Google. And most likely Google is just simply going to direct you to Hershey.com. Think about it. A Hershey kiss is something we eat. The package has a nutrition facts label, and that includes serving size. Using this information, you can deduce that the average mass of a Hershey kiss is 4.55 grams. So let's connect these two light bulbs in series. And we'll connect that light bulb right there. Now get ready for this. Make an observation. Aha. Uh -huh. Only that light bulb appears to be lit. This light bulb, I don't see even a glow coming out of the filament. But this one is very, very bright. What does that tell us? 
what does it tell us about this light bulb compared to that light bulb? Use the word resistance in your explanation. Let's look at these more individually. I'm going to turn off the red light so you can see just the combination of blue and green. And that makes cyan. If I tone, turn down the intensity of the green, notice what happens is that you just get a more pastel version of the more intense color. So it's not that this is off, it just makes it more pastel. I also want you to display this R squared equation. What that will do, if you look, right, this R squared is a, is a, it's a statistical um, analysis that will tell you how good your results are. And it's closer to one it is, the better. This is actually pretty poor. And that means one of two things. Either you shouldn't set the y-intercept equal to zero, or the type of graph that you've chosen is wrong. The anion name, though, has to change. You use the root of it, and then you just add the suffix I-D-E. So let's do some examples. Hydrogen is the cation that doesn't change. And the sulfur, we just take sulfur, right? We eliminate the, the end, and we add I-D-E. So it's hydrogen sulfide. That's the name of this compound. 